Hi, Misha here, and last time I showed you the more or less complete Joy Toy Wehrmacht World War II set. Had the Autumn Spring Camo, the Mountain Division. This time, we're going to go back to the Soviet, which is actually where I started with these. And there's really only a couple of releases. On the one hand, that makes me sad. I wish they had done more. But on the other... I'm glad they at least did this, because a lot of people overlook the Soviet contribution to World War II. This series could have easily just been Americans and Germans, and that was it. So, you know, glass half full. But yeah, basically we have the single card release we looked at at the very first. Then we had a five-pack come out before that, years ago. And then we also had a single boxed... Uh, Soviet officer so that, that's that's it and we'll look at the goods and the bads including the uniforms and the weapons so let's dive in let's start off with the guy we already looked at single card release I've got him with what really does appear to be a PPSH 41 here and because the Soviet military, especially by 1943-44, was really leaning on submachine guns. That's okay. I gave him uh, two of these kind of general purpose pouches. Figured he could carry his extra magazines and drums. The originally, the PPSH-41 just had a 71, 72 round drum. But by 1942, a uh, stick mag was introduced. And so typically you'd get one drum and three to six sticks issued per guy. And yeah, they had entire squads of just machine gunners. Got him with the uh, the summer style forage cap. As I said in the first video, he seems to be in pretty early dress. The uh, Soviet uniform was very much inspired by the old czarist uniform, not to mention just kind of Russian wear around the farm, for example, leg wrappings, uh, woolen dress bits and bobs. Cotton would be coming more and more in use by 1942-43, but in the beginning, a lot of the bits of the kit were that. We've got his bedroll, which could also be a great coat. Sometimes they double those up back here. His shovel, other bibs and bobs. So he's a, he's a nice, well-rounded figure. He came with two different hats, two guns, and uh, only one set of hands because both of his guns are have the same basic stock shape. But yeah, he was a recent release, and I think he's really good. Um, you know, a lot of detail put in. He seems to, like I said, be kind of an early style uniform. Moving on to the first member in the five pack. Very, very, very similar body mold. Essentially the same. At least his uh, shovel handle is straight. <laughs> it's a semi-flexible material. Same pouches and everything. I just gave him the one pouch. They don't come with the pouches on. I like stowing their helmets on the backpack. They, they stay on there really well. Uh, early on they had the S. Shaw 36, then the 39, then the 40 pattern steel helmet. And that would definitely be used in direct combat, but in the summer, or just kind of on general use around about, they would usually have their little cap on. We don't get one with this set, but in the winter, of course, they would wear a classic Ushanka, the furry hat with uh, the ear flaps. In his hands is a SVT-40 with a scope, which they did make. And even in 1944, uh, keep in mind, they made 1.6 million SVT-40s, not to mention a couple of hundred thousand or at least a hundred thousand SVT-38s. They uh, 
quit making them by that point, although they didn't officially cancel the line until 45. So this guy w would be my senior rifleman, usually the the one with the most experience or just the better shot. If an SVT-40 was available, he would get it. If not, he would have a Mosin 9130, later on a Mosin M44. And uh, there were scoped SVTs, although only around 55,000 were actually turned out from the factory with the scope on them. Big old mag hanging off there. As I said in the German video, I've noticed these joy toys tend to lean into some automatics and machine guns more than bolt actions, which is kind of unfortunate with the Russians. But, um, yeah, same articulation as all the rest. These are actually for their size. They're right at four inches, maybe just a hair taller. So they're actually a little bit bigger than old school G.I. Joe, which are you know, three and three quarter. But they have better articulation than G.I. Joe did back in the day. So that's the first member from the regular set. And pretty much the body mold we're going to be looking at for the rest of this video. Except for this one. The Soviet officer. Here he is. He... That does not hang right. I should put it on the other shoulder. Oh, well. Do that later. He actually does come with kind of a satchel, which makes me think of him as being a political officer. And he also has a pair of binoculars. Kind of unique. So his, his accessories are neat. And he has a holster with a pistol in it. And I did pull it out. And it is a... Tokarev TT-33 pistol. I thought they might have just tried to go, you know, go go cheap and um, just put like a 1911 in there because they have that. But no, they actually did it correct. So I am impressed by that. I'm going to try to reseat this submachine gun. I gave it to him because typically your officers had submachine guns, PPSH-41s. This is a weird one that came in the set. It appears to be an earlier PPD submachine gun, hence the whole stock. Now, they did make these. They made quite a few PPDs in the 1930s, and they were still making them at the beginning of World War II, but they were very quickly supplanted by the PPSH-41 and, of course, the PPS-43. But I thought, well, an officer will probably not be using a submachine gun as much, and uh, since in some ways it could be correct, I could see an officer that had been issued one of these and maybe liked it, just, you know, hanging on to it as his personal defense weapon, plus he's got his Joker pistol. Let me see if I can hang it on off his other shoulder a little better. Eh, not really. I think just having so many things on him, oh well. I'll mess with it a little later, kind of get it nice and situated, but I wanted to give him something more than just a pistol. But, uh, he can be the political commissar with his satchel time there. Pistol. It has a working flap, of course, too, on the pistol. Unlike the German, which is a pull-through, it's, it's just a button style, which is technically correct for Russian-style belts and things. Um, the officers went through several kind of small changes. They came into World War II wearing kind of red trim especially higher-ranking officers in gold or bronze epaulets. In the summer of 41, the order came down to remove those. They went to very kind of drab epaulets, rank insignia. They removed a lot of the piping. But by 43, epaulets were back, and uh, they actually kind of returned to a little bit more of a posh coat or jacket. Also in 43, the regular infantry uniform was updated better boots, more waterproof material, it's better equipment. And of course, he has the peak cap and what have you. Uh, back for the five pack here, we have another one I've got set up as a machine gunner, submachine gunner, I should say, with the uh, Papa Shaw. Again, they fielded these in ever-increasing numbers throughout the war. So having two guys with one. Well, there you go. <laughs> they don't, they're okay on the stand, but they're 
foot peg holes are a little narrow. A little shallow, I guess I should say. Oh, well. I'll show you what I mean by that when I've got the hand off. His hands are made to hold more of a standard rifle stock. Here this is. So you've got the drum. Pretty decent representation. They even gave it some effort of kind of corrugating the barrel shroud. Sights on top. Not bad for the scale. It really isn't. Yeah. Next, let's bring out another rifleman. Even though the submachine gun was very important. Rifles. And this is kind of one of my issues with this uh, lineup. We don't get a Mosin Nagant. We don't get a bolt action with any of the Soviet set. This is another looking like a uh, SVT 40. No scope, but it actually has a shorter mag. You could even consider the scoped one to kind of look like an AVS 36. Uh, it's just, you know, you can't, you gotta have to give some allowance when you get to that. But he has another self-loading rifle. To be fair, the idea early on was to make the SVT-40, even the AVS-36 when it was introduced, the standard issue rifle replacing the Moisin. But by 42, with the war going the way it was, they scaled back Chokorev rifle production so they could build more Mosin Nagants because they could build three for every one of those. So... They became less and less common as the war went on. Germans really liked them, though. And one thing I do like about this is it does have a bayonet on it. So kind of in the crook of his arm right there, it looks more just like a rifle. So he can be the standard rifleman in the squad. I do wish the holes in their feet were a little bit deeper. But again, just on the shelf, it's a... Uh, it's not an issue. Here we have one that's really, I think, cool. Again, same basic mold with the blouse. There might be some minor variations on their belt gear. It's got his canteen there. It was issued. But he's holding a light machine gun. And there'd either be one or two light machine gunners depending on if it was a heavy or light squad. This, of course, is a DP. I grew up hearing DP-28, but some say DP-27, some say, and this is actually the correct answer, it's just DP. Either way, it's the light machine gun bipod. It has a seven, excuse me, a 47 round pancake, which earned it the nickname record player. Of course, firing 762 by 54 rimmed and uh, these would be very much in service before World War II a modernized version would, would be introduced they would both serve throughout World War II and into the Korean period and not really be fully retired until the 1950s at, at first the RPD was to replace it 760 by 39 that did some of the time but this was still a little heavier hitting and frankly sometimes more reliable it wasn't really until the RPK and the PKM came along that all the DP and DPMs and DPTs, because they did make a tank version, were introduced. But um, the bipod does move. That's kind of neat. No sling on it, but and the mag doesn't come off, which is probably a good thing. Just be popping off all the time. Again, the soldier is pretty well your standard guy. Suspenser gear. Yeah, that's the light machine gunner in the group. Kind of saving the most impressive for last. This is the heavy or medium machine gun private and his gun in the set. Early on, the Soviet military would issue the 1910 Maxim, which was replaced by updated 1910 30, still firing 765-54R from 250-round uh, belts. And 
1943. These were replaced by the SG-42, excuse me, 43 Goryanov. The uh, Maxim was sometimes considered a heavy because it was water-cooled. The Goryanov is pretty much always considered a medium machine gun because it was simply air-cooled, though it had a changeable barrel. And uh, they would put these on some vehicles, although oftentimes you'd see the DP on a lot of tanks too. And one kind of fun thing, they had these carriages. You could upend it, planting one wheel on the ground and mount the machine gun on the other wheel, making it a de facto AA mount. They also had a tripod for that too, but I think that's cooler. They used basically the same carriage for either the Maxim or the Goryanov, complete with the shield here. And uh, MO box and belt. This is several pieces. The belt and box, unplug, the shield can come off. Kind of neat, the wheels do move on this. And the gun itself does traverse. Our soldier, I removed his bedroll, which is something you can do with all of them. And uh, the machine gunner typically only carried a handgun. Could be a Tokarev, but since he's a private, I thought giving him a revolver, it's kind of just generic revolver that Joy Toy gives, but it can be a Nagant. It's small enough, you're not really going to tell. Even if it's a victory model, which it kind of honestly looks like, it, <clears throat> those are given as lend lease. Either way, for just close in defense, he would uh, have a revolver. Otherwise, same, uh, same guy, same mold that we've. Uh, kind of seen all along but the machine gun kind of makes it and I didn't give him a rucksack just uh, keep him kind of stripped down because when you get these in the five pack the equipment you kind of put on them how you like yeah this is the most impressive piece and one of the bigger pieces in the sets you get from Joy Toy. So yeah, this gives us a medium machine gunner, we've got a light machine gunner, we've got some submachine gunners, we've got a couple of riflemen, even if, yeah, SVT, AVS, not 100% correct, and uh, we have our officer. My only real gripe, I really do wish we had some Mosins, 9130, or at least an M44, M38, that was so prevalent. They could even do a scoped one like they did with the German Car 98 because the 9130PU was very common. But we did get a Tokara pistol. We did get a PPS H41. A PPS 43 would have been neat too. Kind of looking at the guns, most of them kind of seem early or to me. Um, this kind of perception. So, little annoyed that we only basically have one soldier mold. And, uh, little annoyed we didn't get a Mosin. But, I am happy we have a couple of different submachine guns. SVT-40, <coughs> excuse me, SVT-40s are always cool. Probably my favorite gun is the DP-27, DP-28. I like the little folding bipod. And it is an iconic Soviet weapon. But what do you think? Do you like the Russian setup? Again, I think they get overlooked, and I do think even though they only put tooling into really one mold, when they did it, they did it right. A late war uniform would also be kind of cool, but at least we did get an officer, because for, the, for a while, we didn't even have him. Actually, I got him as a, as a bundle, the five-pack plus officer together at uh, that smalljoes.com I said last time and the reason he bundled them and had them on sale he said the Soviets just didn't sell people weren't buying them they were buying the Germans most and foremost and they were buying the American army but not the American airborne which really just baffled me and after getting them the airborne's better um, it's kind of funny that it sl sells slower than the standard army but we'll get there in time for today, we're looking at Ivan here and the uh, 
World War II uniform. They basically had three classes. You had your regular field, your combat uniform. You had kind of your day-to-day -day fatigues for drill purpose and just kind of around the around the base, around the camp. And then you had parade uniforms, which technically were made in the war, but really weren't worn until after the war was over for pageantry and all that. And again, the officer's uniform went from being relatively ornate to more plain, back to being quite ornate. And all of the uniforms were very much inspired by Imperial Tsarist Russia, and frankly also peasant wear, especially the hats, the boots, the, the coats, that kind of thing. So let me know what you think. This is Misha. Catch you very soon. Next time.